financial products often compete against one another for a bigger share of the consumer's wallet. Mutual funds and ULIPs are one such pairing of competing products. It's a battle that has been going on for some time now with both factions using fund performance, charges, asset classes, product flexibility, transparency, taxes, and even advocacy and competitive disinformation as their weapons of choice. Hi everyone, my name is Shankar Nath and in this video, we too shall enter the war room as we do a detailed SWOT analysis of both products across nine different parameters of comparison. In doing so, we shall aim to dispel much of the preconceived notions and misinformation associated with either products so that we as consumers can make better decisions with our money. Having said this, do note that we've covered both mutual funds and ULIPs individually on the ET Money YouTube channel. So if you haven't watched those videos, kindly do so as it will certainly enhance the understanding of this video. There are two tax benefits that are generally offered. First, the benefit of tax deductions under different sections of the Income Tax Act on the amount invested. And secondly, low or no taxes on maturity proceeds and capital gains. Now, for ULIPs, the tax story is pretty big and is certainly a crowd puller. After all, ULIPs have both these tax advantages, that is, the premiums paid are eligible for deductions under Section 80C and all maturity proceeds are exempted from taxes under Section 1010D. At this point, it should be noted that the 2021 budget has amended some parts of the Income Tax Act, which has an implication on all new ULIPs issued on or after 1st of February 2021. For the amendment, any gains from a ULIP policy shall be treated as capital gains in case the premium paid for any year exceeds Rs 2.5 lakhs. In these cases, the maturity from the policy shall be taxed at 10%. On a more realistic basis, our research shows that this change is unlikely to affect the average consumer who tends to pay an annual premium of around 1.1 lakh rupees towards a ULIP policy. We think this amendment might be a problem for certain distributors and banks who tend to pitch a ULIP as an alternative to a five-year fixed deposit. Now, from a mutual fund standpoint, most schemes do not carry any tax benefits. The one exception to this are the funds under the ELSS or equity-linked savings schemes category that do qualify for deduction under Section 80C of the Income Tax Act. With regards to taxes on capital gains, mutual fund investors have no respite and have to pay tax on short-term and long-term capital gain across all mutual fund categories, including ELSS funds. If you need more specifics on capital gain taxation on mutual funds, then do watch a couple of excellent and detailed videos we have on that subject. The links to those videos will be available in the description below and do subscribe to the ET Money YouTube channel to access our growing repository of videos on investing, mutual funds, insurance, NPS, and other relevant personal finance topics. ULIPs come with a built-in life insurance cover. This means in addition to investment returns and tax benefits, ULIPs also offer insurance coverage, making it a triple benefit financial product. On the other hand, mutual funds are purely an investment product and have no insurance built into them. Having said this, there are some mutual fund companies which offer a free of cost but limited insurance plan for some of their schemes. These are offered as a group insurance cover, but these are far and few and often come with many limiting conditions like the tenure of the SIP, a maximum sum insured, uh, constraints like no break in SIP, etc. Net, net, as a mutual fund investor, you will need to buy life insurance separately. And if you don't have one, do consider a term insurance plan which offers very high coverage at reasonably low premiums. ULIPs have a lock-in period of five years, which from a comparison perspective is similar to that of a national savings certificate or a tax saving fixed deposit. However, when compared to mutual funds, five years is a pretty long time. 
and that's because most mutual funds come with no lock-in window which means you can redeem your units as and when you please. There are only two exceptions to this. One, in the case of ELSS or tax saving mutual funds, the lock-in period is three years. And secondly, there are some solution-oriented mutual funds like a children's fund or a retirement fund where the lock-in is five years. But the bulk of the mutual funds have no lock-in period while all ULIP policies have a five-year lock-in. In fact, a good corollary to the lock-in period discussion is when we match it with the duration of the goals. For example, if you have a short-term goal of say one year or two years, then definitely a ULIP will never make sense. It is only if your goal is over five years that a ULIP can even be considered. On the contrary, a mutual fund can fit into multiple tenures running from as low as one day to goals which can run into several years and even decades. In the early years, that is the period between 2004 and 2010, ULIPs were notorious for charging policyholders obscene expenses. These charges came in many different forms and included premium allocation charges, policy administration charges, switching charges, partial withdrawal charges, discontinuance fees, surrender charges, and a few more. Such were the levels of these charges that in fact only 50 to 60% of the premium paid was actually being invested in the stock and bond markets on behalf of the policyholder. However, in the last 10 years, much has changed thanks to the regulators and growing competition from mutual fund companies. Most modern day ULIPs have stripped off all predatory charges and are much leaner and cleaner in their construct. Yes, there are some peripheral charges in some plans, but the most popular and cheapest ones are the online ULIPs, which generally have just two charges, the mortality charges and the fund management charges. A more detailed and insightful account of these charges is available in a separate video that we have hosted on the ET Money YouTube channel. I'll be sure to attach the link to that video in the description below. Now, compared to ULIPs, mutual funds don't have mortality charges, and that's because mutual funds don't offer an insurance cover that ULIPs provide. But of course, mutual funds do charge an expense ratio, which is similar to fund management charges that ULIPs have. What's an expense ratio? An expense ratio or fund management charge is simply the fees charged by the mutual fund or insurance company for managing your money. These fees are used by these companies to pay for fund managers, recruiting good research analysts for trading in securities, audits, regulatory compliances, and implementing other administrative tasks. In fact, let's understand these a bit more. A ULIPS fund management charges are capped at 1.35% as per the IRDA rules. This 1.35% is generally what most insurers charge for equity funds while bond funds are a bit lower at around 0.9%. In the case of mutual funds, expense ratios are a bit more spread out with different asset management companies charging a different percentage. But what's generally true is that the direct plans of most mutual fund schemes are generally lower than the 1.35% mark while the regular plans are higher than the 1.35%. In other words, preferring to invest via the direct plan route will keep your expenses low as compared to a regular plan. Other than the expense ratio, mutual funds have one additional charge and that is the exit load. The exit load is a sort of a penalty that mutual funds charge when a unit holder redeems some part of his or her investment too soon. So if you're someone who invests in mutual funds for a very short duration, then the impact of the exit load should always be kept in mind. All right, to sum this all up, always remember that high charges will eat into your returns and one should take extra note of the charges, especially when considering ULIPs. Do be 100% certain that you have understood each and every charge and don't forget to carefully read the benefit illustration before enrolling into any ULIP policy. There are thousands of mutual fund schemes across dozens of categories. There are schemes that invest in large cap companies, mid cap companies, are flexible across capitalizations, short term debt, long term debt, 
multiple asset classes, dynamic asset allocators, funds that only invest in banks, only in pharma companies, and dozens of categories and combinations. In fact, fund choices is one area where mutual fund companies outscore units big time and offer consumers a wide range of asset classes and recruit experts in areas like equities, debt, government bonds, gold, commodities, international equities, and even specific sectors or themes. On the contrary, a ULIP doesn't have many fund options and often come with the standard equity and debt variants, which means your choice of asset classes is quite restricted with ULIPs, which in turn might impede the buildup of a good asset allocation strategy. Additionally, there is another class of funds which are missing in the ULIP portfolio of funds, and these are the index funds. Index funds are quite popular globally and have been making good progress in India as well. To put it in numbers, the total AUM of index and ETF funds stood at 1 lakh crores in December 2018. Then by December 2019, this number had jumped to 1.7 lakh crores. And most recently in December of 2020, this AUM is at 2.7 lakh crores. We believe having an index fund option within a ULIP can actually help them market their offerings better. And there are a couple of strong reasons for that. One, quite a high number of consumers are moving towards passive investing as more fund managers find it difficult to beat the index. And secondly, this combination of index funds rebalancing through unlimited switches and zero tax implications can lead to a higher return for investors and can pose a serious challenge for mutual funds. In fact, just this February, the IRDA or the Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India has set up a panel for the introduction or might I say reintroduction of index linked insurance products. Index linked insurance products or ILIP were available until 2013 post which the regulators had taken them off the shelf. I'll be honest here, before we started looking at specific numbers, our team's general impression was that ULIPs would underperform mutual funds by a big margin. It turned out that a hunch was only marginally accurate. Here, let's look at the five-year average performance of ULIPs and mutual funds across some popular fund categories. The data here shows that the category performance of ULIPs were lower than the category returns of mutual funds, but were not alarmingly lower. It was somewhat in the acceptable range. However, ULIPs do have some construct issues, which is where the real problem lies. There are two issues in particular. Firstly, because of the charges, the amount of money that goes into investments is lower in ULIPs as compared to a mutual fund. So for example, if you invest 100 rupees in both instruments, all 100 rupees is invested in the mutual fund. However, maybe only 95 rupees gets invested in a ULIP, as that remaining 5 rupees goes towards mortality, premium allocation, and other charges. At this point, one should also note that when a ULIP says that it has delivered 10% returns, what it really means is that it has delivered 10% on the 95 rupees and not the 100 rupees. So that's something all investors need to know of. A second concern with ULIPs is that they don't have a porting feature. This means that if you're not happy with the investment performance of your insurance company's ULIP plan, you don't have the option of moving your portfolio to another insurance company which might have a better investment team. Moreover, with a high lock-in period of five years, there's a chance that you might be stuck with a poor or average performing fund for a prolonged period of time, which is certainly something that we don't want. Mutual funds offer no loyalty benefits to its unit holders. On the other hand, new age low-cost ULIPs have come out with loyalty benefits for their policyholders. These are in the form of additional units that are allotted to the policyholder if they stay with the fund for longer durations like 5, 10 or more years. This is obviously done to ensure that the policyholders remain invested in for the longer duration. So effectively, the loyalty bonus comes as a retention tool. Once again, how much loyalty bonus will be given and when it will be given would be available in the benefit illustration given to you by the insurance company or your insurance agent.
One of the bigger advantages with ULIPS and something that's not available with mutual funds is the switching and rebalancing facility. ULIPS allow policyholders to move units fully or partially from one fund to the other without attracting an exit load or any form of taxes. For investors who tend to time the market and change asset allocation often, this is certainly a big plus when compared to mutual funds. And that's because in mutual funds, when one wants to rebalance his or her portfolio from one asset class to another, like from equity to debt, one has to sell some units of equity and purchase corresponding units of debt. In other words, this means selling some units of equity, which further means that there will be some capital gain tax and some exit load might also be charged. Our research shows that mutual funds and ULIPs have improved their levels of transparency on many fronts. For instance, both mutual fund companies and insurance companies offer daily NAVs which can be accessed from their respective website. Both publish a fact sheet every month which includes the fund's performance, portfolio of holdings, benchmark returns, volatility score, fund manager details, etc. In terms of charges, the mutual fund scheme's TER or total expense ratio is communicated to the unit holder from time to time. And likewise, in ULIPS, every policyholder is offered a benefit illustration which features a projected cash flow statement and a breakup of each and every charge so that the prospect understands what they are buying into. Overall, the last few years have seen a number of positive changes from the regulator in improving transparency, which has in turn built up a lot more interest in financial products for the everyday investor. ULIPs have a good story to tell. After all, they are an investment product that comes with built-in insurance cover, tax benefits, loyalty benefits, and a seamless switching option. And incidentally, mutual funds too have an equally good story in them with better performance, lower expenses, more fund choices, and no lock-in period. In our opinion, the choice between a ULIP or mutual fund comes really down to an understanding of how either product fits into your investment plan. For example, if you have a short-term goal, say you want to pay off your car loan in two years, in such a scenario, the question one needs to ask will be around the safety of capital and the ability to withdraw the money in two years. This means one will have to lean towards a low-risk debt mutual fund rather than a ULIP. Similarly, if it were a long duration goal like retirement, then some different questions need to be asked. Questions like, what's your performance expectation over the year? Or which assets do you need to invest your money in? How often would you rebalance your portfolio? Do you need liquidity? What will be the total tax implication? In fact, this last question is pretty interesting if one were to frame it in a different manner, like say, will the additional returns from mutual funds offset the tax savings from ULIPs over the next 20 years? And believe me, it's questions like these and the work that one puts towards getting the answers to these questions is what distinguishes a good investor from a lazy one. And with this, we come to the end of this video. I hope you liked our content and will draw many learnings from the information and insights presented. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Thank you for watching and I look forward to catching up with you next week with another insightful video. Until then. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.